What other things? Are there any questions? Yeah, I was going to say, are there any questions that you guys have for us? Yes, ma'am. For Georgia, there's a, a lot of some teach art appreciation. Uh -huh. And um, the first day of class, I do post everything, study guide, uh, PowerPoint for that particular lesson. And I just do one at a one time. But a lot of my students do not know how to access Georgia Vista. It's so gotten easier. I do a overview. Yeah. So because the first thing they say, well, what is that? I, I didn't get my, because I email each student personally. Gotcha. Yeah. And the first thing they say, well, I didn't get my email, so I don't know if everybody does that. Yeah. An overview of how to. Well, I was going to say, typically the students, when they get their schedule print out of all their classes, there is a username and password that's indicated for yeah. Vista that's on there. So it might just be an issue of them not recognizing the fact that they need to actually physically go and log on and to I have think, access. Yes, because a lot of them really didn't know, mm -hmm. you know, well, this is where I'm on, you know, yeah. I showed this is where your grades are, this is where and your I don't know, did they do that at the orientation? Yes. They, okay. Yeah, and it's on their schedule. Um, I don't know if they go into a lot of detail about Vista, but they at least tell them that they have that right. affirmation if they're listening. Um, but I also put the Vista web address on, in my syllabus mm -hmm. yeah. and um, I mean, it's on the home page, so yeah. it's not too hard for them to get to, but yeah. And then I think now when you go to Vista, it actually tells you on the side what to enter for mm -hmm. your username and password. They've, ever since IT got a hold of it, it's been made a lot easier. Uh, and the IT is really good about helping if they do have any problems. But I think there have been a lot less problems lately. But I think it's great what you do, mm -hmm. like kind of go yeah. through it and show it in class. I think it's better if they actually see it. Right. Because a lot of them may not even have a chance to come to the orientation. Right, so. right, absolutely. And, and it alleviates excuses. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I'm all about alleviating excuses <laughs> and being left alone. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? I feel like we should take this on the road. Okay. Um, I'm scared. For radio show? A radio I have show. One other I'm sorry. As far as the assessment, um, do you have a better idea of how to let students know prior before midterm? You know, so they just don't have to go online to look at their grades. Well, is there another? I do. Well, I do two things to make them leave me alone. <laughs> is that um, I have, of course, the Vista, and I always tell them, like, that's where you look for your grades. And when you first log into Vista, of course, it tells you when you have new grades and all of that. So I do that. But the other thing I do is the last page of my syllabus after I go through the schedule is a list of all of the things with lines next to them, like blank out of 50, all of that. And there's days that I give participation points as well if they're there to participate. It has every date that those are, and it has blank out of 10, and at the end it has a grading scale on it and all of that. And I encourage them every time I hand back a grade or there's a participation point day to go in there and write it down physically. I also tell them, it's kind of related, to keep all of their assignments. And like, I was like, I have a folder, keep them at least till the end of the semester. I said, because if you get on Vista or somewhere and you see that I've been on a grade differently, mm -hmm. the only proof you have that I was wrong is that actual physical assignment. And the minute you show it to me, I'll fix it, no big deal, we'll fix it. But if you don't have it, I, there's no way we can do anything about it. So that's another thing too with grades. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, you know, the school has started the new early warning mm -hmm. program. And so that's also, and I have been telling them about it and reminding them to go um, look at that. Yeah, for me it's hard because um, we use a point system, uh, and so it's very difficult because usually by midterm you only have like one major test and one major assignment, but I think that's where that early intervention program is really handy, because it was annoying to put those numbers or those simples in, it really should have a drop down menu and you just change it if you need to. But anyway, I digress. Like only good if someone needs to have it. Correct. But um, I think that students... <laughs> I looked at the camera. <laughs> uh, but one thing I would say that if you, cause if you don't want to have all those how am I doing grades, mm -hmm. I would say having that grade tracking sheet has really been my best friend mm -hmm. because you can just say, well, let me see your grade tracking sheet, you know, and then that way they have a better idea. And I think you can certainly communicate if they failed every major assignment mm -hmm. up until midterms that you might want to suggest that you might want to rethink take mm -hmm. this course, but you can start off on a better foot. Because I think they appreciate that because no student wants to get to the end of semester not realizing they were close to it, which they should, but let's get real, they don't. Yeah. Um, versus getting to the end of the semester and failing anyway. So I think they would appreciate any type of information you provide for them. Well, I would just like to ask what uh, everybody's experience has been with this first progress report that we had to put in a couple of weeks ago. I haven't eight had weeks ago. a single student comment. Me either. Well, I, I haven't had anybody to verbally 
a comment anything to me, but the ones that I've given the, the UP right. to, many of them are just gone. I have not but, seen yeah, but are they withdrawn? They or have not no, withdrawn. They have yeah, not I have the same, same thing. thing. They're physically yeah. not there, but they haven't right. gone in and withdrawn. So I'm, yeah. I'm guessing they'll either send them a letter or I communicate an email thing. somehow. Well, I think it's really going to end up causing a bigger problem if they do not withdraw with our uh -huh. attendance policy. Right. right. They, they are supposed to get an email. But that encourages are, them? These are the but these are your students slackers. that are least likely to check right. emails. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things I did when I filled mine out this year is I sent a reminder email. Um, I just did a BCC and wrote the email once and sent it to any student who got a UP. You know, dear student, I am reporting you as having unsatisfactory progress in this class. I gave them a reminder of the attendance policy. I was lucky. In six classes, I only had about five students I had to report. So they all got the same. And I made it so generic I could send it to every class. Yeah. Whether it was a lit class, a community, you know, or a comp class, whatever. And um, they all got that. And I actually got a response um, from one of the online students, because um, I included a proviso in there for online students, attendance equals this. Right. And she actually came in to my office hours, saw me, and has now caught back up. Good. So that's I good. think one out of like right. five or six. That's, that's, right. the, that's the point of it. So, right. um, but yeah, because they're not they're not checking the email and I think a lot of times if the email comes from an email address they don't recognize but when I wrote in there you are in my subject line was you are in danger of failing <laughs> that they pay attention yeah. to yeah. So. I think the hard thing with that whole program is trying to find the line between helping them and the, the amount of help we should give them mm -hmm. and not babysitting them right. uh, and making them have responsibility for their own actions and that's where I'm really trying to have I'm having a problem finding that yeah, I mean, and it might be easier for divisions um, like ours that have an attendance policy. Do you know what I'm saying? Because we're also looking at the fact that once you hit five, you're probably not going to be very successful in our classes anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess it's probably harder on us to maintain a distinction between, okay, when do we say enough is too much based on the content. But that's a great idea with the email, though. I just incorporated the two together since we okay. already had the other. Because I could say you, you know, the people that got a UP also had three or more absences right. already, mm -hmm. and so I could say that in the email as well. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I think, um, you know, I had one contact me and say, okay, I'm going to drop the class. The other one who came in, so I think they're more likely to check email from us uh -huh. than they are necessarily the right email that comes to them from the system. Mm -hmm. Michelle, I make my heading warning. <laughs> yes. I mean, the science behind it is really, I think, is good, and I think it will be effective if we can work some of the kinks out. I think it's right now putting more pressure on the instructor to physically go in and actually update things. If well, and the reality is, I send those emails about this point in the semester anyway mm -hmm. because you've got those students who've already got three or four out of their five. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, so, I mean, the students that we're capturing with that program, I think we were already capturing mm -hmm. with our attendance policy. Well, I only had the one grade to to go by. That's why I went by attendance, because I only had one major grade. Yeah. And yeah. for a lot of my students, it's kind of a wake-up call. Oh, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in college now. And so many of them got D's. And so mm -hmm. because of the way we were told to do it, they all got these UPs. So out of my four classes that have 30 to 35 people in them. There's about 10 in each class. Oh, wow. There's a lot. And so many of them, I would say half of the numbers that I've turned in as UB are, I haven't seen them since. <laughs> but they have not withdrawn. Do you think they don't understand that they have to do I went them? through it. You know, I talked about it in class, if they were there on that particular class when I talked about it and discussed what it was. And being on... Uh, What's it called? The Academic Progress Committee. Before I know how important this is, but I just think that it's a little too soon. I think this next thing that we want to do before we do the SNU right before midterm is going to be much more beneficial. But I think if, yeah, early. I think if we did attending, non-attending, and then the one right before midterm, I think the two would be sufficient. I agree. All right. Well, if there's no more questions, I think we're going to move on to Sorry. Dana. Talking. No, I like I like having this kind of conversation. 